Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face And still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself I'm driving Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly, what's up? Hey Jules, <laughs> we're back again. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> well, wait, it's Lisa's and Dice's and Julian <laughs> Fry's. <laughs> we're back for another hour. <laughs> That's it. You know, this is what happens when we do week after week of double episodes so that I can move to Panama and not have to record. <laughs> That's it. You get not only one, one, one episode, you get two, two, two <laughs> episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a fabulous guest today. Who we do we do. have with us today? I'm, I'm so excited. Jason Zuck is here. Jason and I met when I did his podcast, The Social Psychic Radio Show, and we had such a great conversation. I was like, dude, you've got to come on my podcast. <laughs> he's like, okay, let's do it. So he's being a great sport and coming on onto the uh, episode. So we're, you know, it's so funny. We're going to talk about life after death, but I'm going to start by saying Jason's an attorney. So yeah, you know, we'll just start with that. So he's actually licensed to practice law in Florida and Texas and Massachusetts. No, Minnesota. Is that MS? I don't know. Alabama and New Jersey. And he, he's got a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Tampa, Tampa and a Juris Doctor from Nova Scotia University, Southeastern University and then the LLM. Oh, a master's of law and an international and comparative law from Georgetown University. I feel like I am on a law podcast right now. But Jason is also a psychic medium and he's been providing accurate, intuitive advice and guidance within many different social contexts ever since 2004. So in January 2017, he decided to offer intuitive guidance professionally so that he can further provide clients with the chance to gain insight on matters within their life that require further attention. And by working with others to confront existing obstacles and challenges, Jason aspires to provide clarity and reassurance to those seeking advice. Um, I, I got to tell you, I had so much fun on his podcast, The Social Psychic Radio Show. You definitely have to check that out. And Jason is currently also producing a new podcast called Psychic Visions, which is co-hosted by his best friend and fellow psychic, Megan Kane, and is signed with Electrocast Media. Psychic Visions is going to be deb debuting in a few weeks, which means that by the time this comes out, It'll probably be up. So, Jason, oh my God, dude, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. So, you know, we were talking before the show started and you just won a bunch of awards. You know, it's hard for me to talk. I told you this before we get on. Um, my mom always makes a joke when I called her. I, I, won, I won two categories of the communicator awards. It's called... I found out right before I went to California and I called my mom to tell her, like, I was all excited. This is something in podcasting. So I'm really excited about my mom's like, you always want awards. And I was like, well, thanks, mom. What do you mean by that? Well, it's no surprise to me. You're winning awards since you won your first, you know, ribbon on uh, uh, in the first grade for running a, a race or, and I'm just like, mom, this is a little different. <laughs> so yes, I won these two categories uh, from the communicator awards called best diversity inclusivity and you know that one of those categories it's it's really awesome and then another one for best spiritual podcast and uh it, it made my it made my month my whole month of may has been highlighted by the the fact that you know the stuff i'm doing for podcasting is definitely where i'm headed where i'm going people ask me all the time how you introduced me being a lawyer yeah i trained to be a lawyer i've done it for 20 years and one of the things i didn't realize under my own nose is i'm a psychic a podcaster and aspiring life coach, but I'm, I'm creative. And um, I think that's one thing I like to tell people about podcasting is you can find your creative energy at a later stage in life. I'm 46. When I was 42, I was like, I don't have any creative bones in my body. I'm just a lawyer. Sometimes I'm psychic, but that's about it. And then 
next thing you know, I'm getting into podcasting and uh, finding a whole new course of my life, a whole new path. There you go. That's freaking awesome. Thank you. So congratulations. That's fantastic. I'm I'm really excited for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So we know that the next one coming up is going to be, be just as awesome. So tell us what the next one's about. Psychic Visions. I would love to have you guys meet my best friend, Megan, some point because she's like salt and pepper, you know, one, one to the other. And we're that close. And uh, her husband jokes at her because we're best friends. And she's like, I got my work husband, which is me. And then I've got my regular husband, which is her, which is Brian. And uh, we're just really tight. We just went to California together. Megan's the reason we've got this whole show idea. She um, she was signed with Electrocast Media about a year, a year and a half ago. And from the time she signed with them on another show, she's on called Bodacious Minds with Yvette Lopez. She's the guest co-host on that show. She was saying to the producers, I, I think, you know, we're going to do some type of show in the future. My best friend and I, I'd love to have you guys find out about it. And so last August, one day she calls me up. She's like, Jason, you know, I have a little free time on my shoulders. Let's put together our new show. And by that Thursday, three days later, we already had the concept created. We had a voiceover actor, which we're not doing for the actual production now, but we did our own little production of an intro outro. You know what that's like being podcasters, but we did it in three days. And then we put some episodes out there and then we got signed in October with Electrocast Media, which is really cool. Um, our producers are Mark Netter and Peter Raffleson, who uh, are really intertwined with uh, L.A. and creativity. And I'm just really excited to work with them. And I know our launch coming up. We've done eight episodes so far about we're going to get 10 together all the way. And then we're going to launch our series and um, we'll do a debut and stuff. I've never done that before formally. I've always done stuff just on the seat of my past with my own show to see my own fans. So, so what's the show about? Well, it's going to be Megan and I talking about different psychic concepts and spirituality, meditation. Like our first few guests, we've had uh, Athena Bari on, Dr. Travis Fox, who's a hypnotherapist with the Ultimate Business Quest. Athena Bari is Crystal Reiki Healer's her, 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 her uh, Instagram handle. These people are amazing. When you, when you look up something and you think, I'd love to learn more about Reiki healing. She's like the forefront of it for Athena Bari. Or I'd like to learn about hypnotherapy and, 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 and quick learning and business concepts, Dr. Travis Fox. Like these are the people we have on the show, like the go-to people. So I'm really excited about it because I think our audience is going to, our new audience and our prospective listeners are going to listen to everything we do. And I think they'll really enjoy it because we have some real conversations with some amazing people who are practitioners, thought leaders, visionaries, cutting edge stuff. That's the goal. We love to to talk about spiritual stuff here, as you well know. And uh, so, you know, today's topic is all about life and death, life after death, right? So, you know, when we talked and we were setting up this topic, you picked this topic. Tell me why. We spent, especially with the pandemic, we spent so much, even when I had my cancer in 2018, we spent so much of our life focus on what's ahead. So much of our life focus on getting as much stuff crammed in our, you know, physical lifetimes that we, we get to a point, and this has happened to me when I was 30, I was terrified of losing my hair. Well, oops, it's gone. At the time, at the time I was terrified. I, I remember I got the hair club for men glued on, you know, the commercials for hair club. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one to tell everyone that I had hair plugs on my head, but I, I have to admit I did. And that was my 30th birthday. My grandmother agreed to get me the hair plugs. They're not the ones you actually like get put into the head. They like glue down. So on a windy day, your hair picks up a little bit. It waves to people without you knowing it. I mean, that was like my 30th, right? So when I look at life now and I'm 46, I look back at my 30 year old self with this glued on hair. I knew that when we go through our life changes and our life transitions, that we have to take life less seriously and look at ourselves and say, you know what, just because you're 40 and you don't have a kid yet, or just because you're 30 and your hairline's receding, don't don't beat yourself up over it, you know? And death, it's a graduation to me. I said that before we got on the air together. Meaning like, we all learn so much here with our experiences, and then we graduate. We go back to the next place where we started. That's what I believe. And 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 crossing over is so seamless. It's like falling asleep on the couch while watching TV. I mean, if, if I was to tell you that that's the reality of what I pick up from the thousands of people that have come through to talk to me when I do readings, then, I mean, they literally assign you a greeter. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine crossing over on the other side and you got your grandma sitting there waiting for you 
because she wants to make sure that you understand that you crossed over. That's how subtle and how seamless it is. And when you cross over, you're, you're basically given an orientation by your loved one that's assigned to you. And you see all your other loved ones and everybody else is there. And they watch us. We're their reality show. So to tie it into what we're dealing with in our lives right now, we basically live our lives, live our experience here. We're watched by our loved ones. Love is the umbilical cord that te- keeps us you know, attached to each other. And when you cross over, basically everyone you worry about on the other side is watching you, trying to make you feel better, trying to reassure you, trying to give you guidance in your dreams in very subtle ways. Wait, 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 wait. We, I have a, hold, hold, hold on, pause, please. <laughs> so, so I'm the voice of the person listening to this podcast. So hold on. So I have a greeter waiting on, on the other side going, all right, would you, look, I'm here for you. It's okay. I'm right here <laughs> and bringing us over. Then basically I have to go through an orientation. So hey, welcome to welcome. Welcome. You're dead. <laughs> yep. It happened. Here's your life. So then do I start all over in school again? No, you're in a better place. Everyone that comes through on the other side, they're always happy. They're always in it. The, and they're alive, by the way. They're not like, I'm not, I'm not picking up a residual energy from 30 years ago when grandma comes through. I'm picking up grandma's energy now because she'll, she'll pr- provide factual information about herself in, in a way where the person who's coming, who she comes through to understands it's the grandmother coming through. It's, there's no one like her, her personality. 99.9% of who we are stays with us when we cross over. The only 1% or 0.01% is our physical bodies, our personality, our energy, everything. It's all made of energy. So it goes to the next spot. And okay, the, that's one mental, of the coolest things I've ever heard about. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Mental illness doesn't follow us because my grandmother suffered from severe depression, anxiety, and all that. And when she crossed over, she's no longer the grandma we knew that used to push buttons and cause a lot of distress internally in the family. So it's it's a different it's a different way, at least my way of seeing it through all the various interactions I've had since December, since August 12, 2004, when my grandfather died. That's the night I first became a psychic. My journey since then has seen all these different things that it's my normal life that I'm used to could just get used to things. When you pick up on someone's deceased relative, when you're at the store or, you know, if you're driving to a, to a park and you see somebody and you get on the phone with them and you pick up on their deceased relative, it just happens. But I'll say, you know, there's a lot of psychic mediums out there, a lot of intuitive people, people I've worked with who have grieved their loved ones who now consider themselves more intuitive and psychic than ever before, because we're woken up by uh, when our loved ones cross over or our pets even, or anyone we're attached to when they cross over, it keeps us open to it as an idea and as an idea in general. Well, let's talk about that for a minute because, um, you know, I've been talking to people about their awakenings because so many people are waking up right now. I mean, just, it's been insane ever since, the uh the pandemic started and even before that for some people it's been a wild ride right so tell us about your awakening and how that happened it happened in stages um my grandfather passed away in 2004 i was a single parent family so my grandfather helped raise me as my father basically my mom's dad and when he retired to florida here i am i'm in tampa they brought me here 30 years ago i've never left and so i always had a premonition i called it a vibe at the time that when my grandfather dies, I'll have no one to console me. I'll be around no one else. Like, and I'm always around a lot of people. That's just my personality. In Tampa, I know a lot of people. In New Jersey, it's just the way it works. And so my grandfather had a stroke seven, eight years later in 2004. And I remember telling all my friends about this weird premonition I had. And they're like, oh, it's just a premonition. It doesn't mean anything. And they knew my family has some, like, they call it woohoo, you know, the woohoo stuff. My grandmother was very intuitive. My mom's intuitive now. She openly admits it. My brother... Um, even my distant cousins is something in my family. I don't know what, but I think a lot of us are very opened up after the pandemic. Well, long story short, he crossed over. He had a stroke, but before he had it, before in between his stroke and when he crossed over, I got to see him once in New Jersey the day after. So my grandfather had a stroke on a Monday. He moved up there and, and he had a stroke. And then that day after I got to see him briefly for like a, a little while. And all that I remember is his hands were like moving a certain way. And that's how I could communicate with him at that point. And I remember I was brought to tears about it. And then I went back to Tampa. And then like my premonition, my boss at the time for my law firm asked if I'd go up to cover a deposition for him in Wisconsin. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. Thinking my grandfather will be around for another week. Not even think about my premonition at the time. So I go to Wisconsin to cover the depot. I'm only supposed to be there a day. So I wind up staying overnight. 
And that's the night he crossed over. So my mom called me 8.07 o'clock, 8.07 p.m. Central Standard Time, or was it Eastern Standard? So 7.07 in Wisconsin. And yeah, my grandfather died. So I was like, oh my God. And I hung up my mom and I'm like, my premonition. Oh my God, I remember this now. I'm by myself with no one to console me. And I kind of fell back into the bed and looked up. The room was dark even at seven. And it was like a, a Unsolved Mysteries episode coming to life right in front of me because orbs of light just appeared in the room and they were swirling around. And it wasn't anything weird at all, by the way. It was my grandfather's energy and a wave of unconditional love just washed over me. And between that happening and seeing the orbs of light and all of a sudden he's communicating to me telepathically saying, son, I love you. Don't worry about me. I'll always be with you. Go get some food. Don't grieve me. I'm with you all the time. So I went, as I'm talking to you right now, matter of fact, I went to Panera Bread in Wisconsin, Baraboo, Wisconsin, went to the drive-thru. Actually, I parked the car. I went inside. My close friend from high school called, asked me, her name's Tracy, asked me about my grandfather. I said, oh, he just died. Oh my God, how are you? I said, I'm fine. I'm at Panera Bread. She's like, what do you mean you're fine? This is the man who raised you. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But what about your premonition? I go, what about it? You're by yourself with no one to console you. I'm like, I'm in Wisconsin. And my grandfather technically consoled me because he came that day and opened me up. So then she became a skeptic. And that night, as I'm talking around the phone, I sense that she was being skeptical of me. And I, as a lawyer and as a psychic, you don't like when people are skeptical because the lawyer side of me wants to establish the evidence to prove up what I'm talking about. And the psychic side just knows that she's not, you know, connecting to me. So all of a sudden, out of the blue, I looked at her on the phone. I was like, you know, what about your grandmother? And she's like, what about my grandmother? She's did, she's been dead five, six months. I go, yeah, what if she could come through? If you're not believing me, she goes, I'm not saying I don't believe you. But then all of a sudden I felt the energy. She's doubting you. She's doubting you. I said, what if your grandmother could come through and have a message to say to you? She goes, well, my grandmother's dead. That's not possible. I said, what if your grandmother told me to tell you that she was watching you for six years when you were a child in the Poconos in Pennsylvania? She used to take you there and you and your sister and she would take you on nature walks. And then at night she would read you stories even till you were 12 years old. She would take the covers, kiss you on the forehead and say, don't let the bed bugs bite. And I said, just like that, without even thinking. And the phone dropped. <laughs> and her future husband, Danny, grabs the phone and says, what did you just say to Tracy? I go, why? Well, she's in the bathroom crying right now. And I'm like, well, and as I was explaining it, she grabs the phone back and says, how did you know? Only my grandmother knows that stuff. So then I freaked myself out because, was like, oh, my God, when I'm telling her, Am I really talking to her grandmother right now after talking to my grandfather? Like I went back to the, the hotel room. I left all the lights on. I was like totally terrified of thinking something's watching me, strangers in the dark lurking kind of thing. But um, overall, I figured out after how many years it's been since 04, 18 years, that this is all a process. It's not about me being afraid of the dark. It's not meant about, you know, my grandfather coming through to tell me to go get Panera bread or Tracy's grandmother reminding her of the Poconos. It's about the understanding of life after death that, you know, we attribute death as the ending because that's all we see on this side of it. But if you're able to actually go through the process, you're going to learn it's not a scary process. It's not anything bewildering. I know there's a lot of shows created about it. But if you're breathing right now, which I think everyone listening is breathing as they hear this, I would say, well, yeah, you're breathing. Now you're now you're paying attention to the fact that you're breathing. Right. And if I tell you that when you were born, do you remember that? No, because it's natural. You, you were born. And when you eat and sleep, those are all natural processes. So how is death any different than any of the other ones I just mentioned? And if you look at it that way and you boil it down, it doesn't scare me anymore. When I had my cancer, I realized that. I had a few other moments with my grandfather coming through to me when I was under anesthesia, reassuring me to tell my mom that I'm not predeceasing her, that I'm living a full life. She's living a natural life, dying when she's supposed to. And we're going to be okay. And that's exactly the prayer my mom had every night to my grandfather for 120 days during my diagnosis when she never told me about it. But when I repeated back those exact words to her, she knew that my grandfather was coming through to reassure us. And so in a short form, that's my answer about life after death, at least from my experiences. <laughs> Great story. Not really short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but awesome. I because when he was telling that, I'm thinking, dude, that's a mic drop after that. And literally that she dropped the phone. You know, I've been trying to get her to come on my show to talk about that story because she technically started me with everything that's going on. She's like, I'm thinking about it. That's a, she's an occupational therapist. So for me, I think she looks at her traditional career and loves what I'm doing. But she's like, you know, in order for me to do that, there's a process involved. I'm like, no worries. We're good. But that doesn't stop me from telling the story because I'm not giving full names. <laughs> 
That is a flipping amazing story. I love it. So, so, okay. So when your grandfather came through and, and even when her grandmother came through was that, cause I'm just learning about channeling, right. And all that. So do, I'm assuming you weren't meditating. It didn't, cause that didn't come across in the story. You're just like, Hey, here's what it is. So do you like hear it in your brain? Do you feel it? Here's How does that work? Yes. I never have, but that's the analogy I get from anyone who comes through the other side about what it's like for me. In other words, I get images, I get words, I'll get, res- I'll get thoughts sometimes that the loved one pops in there and just lets me know about, or I'll bring up, I had a, a client come on my show and, or I'm sorry, someone I did a reading for, they'll come through and they'll say, oh, you, um, you painted three rooms of your house in the last two weeks. I like the color to let them know they're watching them paint the house or you just went and bought a new car. Or you're getting your car serviced. Or I literally had someone come through and say, you need to check the air in the tires. You're not, you're neglecting the car. Like you did when you were younger. I don't, I'm not there to bail you out anymore. This is a girl came to me. Her dad was telling her, check all the pressure in the tires, make sure you check. And she's got a husband, but the father came through and she went and got her. Oil. And then I get a text message later. You know what? My tires needed gas. My dad was right. I'm sorry. My tires needed air. My dad was right. Like those kind of things happen all the time where I'll give a reading and then the people come back and later say, you were right about that. Like my, my loved one was right when they said X, Y, or Z, whatever it is like the, it's, it's crazy how it comes through, but they're very connected to us. And what I tell people is now that we have the, we, we can bring up analogies of like Wi-Fi, you know, um, loved ones on the other side, like a subtle Wi-Fi signal. Unless you have a way to pick it up, you're not going to be aware of them. Like you wouldn't know Wi-Fi unless we had devices to show us the Wi-Fi signal and the connectivity. It's the same thing with spiritual spirituality, mediumship, and our loved ones on the other side. They're always around us. So many people come to me and say, well, I, I just, I'm terrible at meditating. I don't pick up anything from my grandmother. I've never had anything from her except for a dream now and then. And I'm like, well, a dream is something, isn't it? But it's just one weird dream where... I don't see her. I just hear her voice. I go, what is she telling you? She's telling me I need to study more and finish my class. I go, are you in a class right now? Yes. Well, that's just my stress talk. I go, do you think you might need to study harder? Is your grandmother trying to tell you study harder to do better in school? She used to always tell me that when I was alive. Well, how is it different now? She can't even tell you to study for your classes. Like, what is that? That's not telling you that's not your grandmother. You know, when you can be overly skeptical to the point where you don't even recognize the breadcrumbs that come through because you're just not looking at it that way. Because, you know, you're looking for another excuse for what it is, right? Yeah, that's and like this a is... text message from grandma. You're not going to get a text message, but you'll get a subtle dream of her telling you to study for your test coming up. That's coming up in two weeks. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, this is this is one of those things. You said something that, that really... Um, really resonated because I I hear this a lot from people who are just waking up and I had that experience myself. And so it's, it's this moment where you like say something and you're like, Holy shit, that was right. Right. And you just freak yourself out. Right. There's, there's a moment. moment. Yeah. The aha. Oh my God. What does this mean? I got to go hide in bed moment. Right. (laughs) You know, till I figure out what it means. What what does it mean? What am I responsible for? What do I have to do? Ah, uh, right. Am I imagining this? I'm just. I, that's just. I'm saying it to myself, so it can't be real. But what? There's always a moment where you you can't deny that that it's not you're imagining it. Right. There's always. I'll something. give you a perfect example of that. So my yeah. grandfather died in '04, and he always had a thing about pennies from heaven. He'd leave us pennies. And so when he dies, when I really became psychic, but I wasn't really open about it until 2017, 10, 13 years later. But during that 13 year period, things would happen and I would just kind of learn to accept it. One of the times I remember I was in Mississippi doing legal work for Hurricane Katrina. And my mom called to tell me that my grandmother and her were at Atlantic City and that they just both found a penny independent of each other in the casino. And that has to be grandpa because grandpa would be reminding us about pennies, like being fis- fiscally conservative or save your money, save your pennies. As they're telling me this, I don't know if you've ever been to Louisiana, Mississippi, but there's a twin span bridge that crosses between the two that they rebuilt part of. I was on that twin span bridge coming from Louisiana, going into Mississippi when I just landed. My mom and my grandmother excited telling me this story. I looked to the left and there's a large tractor trailer delivering food probably from Mississippi into Louisiana. And on the side of it was an advertisement on the side of the van for Kroger's and it had pennies from heaven. 
as they were telling me about the pennies at the casino for my grandfather, I looked to the left on a twin span bridge with nothing around but water and concrete. And all of a sudden, the t- it's the timing of it, by the way. Their messages to us, I've learned this. My grandfather teaches, has taught me through the pandemic that when you get messages from the other side, they're always timed in such a way like that example. They were talking about it. And all of a sudden, I, I mean, yeah, you could say, oh, well, that's just a random truck that passed you. Pennies from heaven, which is what my grandfather used to say. While my mom and my grandmother are excited telling me they both found a penny in the same casino. Yes, you could find pennies in casinos. Yes, a grocery store could drive past you with it, but it's adding it all together. And that's the part that people need to understand about spirituality is you got to look at the big, you got to zoom out a little. You can't just look at one thing. Oh, my dream for my grandmother telling me to study. No, you got to zoom out. You got to take a look at it all. And piece it together. And when you do that, you will likely find, just like when you open a, you cut open a tree and you look at the trunk, you see the little lines, you'll see these spiritual things that will be right in front of you, these breadcrumbs. I, I tell people that all the time. And that's what that's one thing for me on my personal journey is realizing truly when we as human, we are all connected, but everything is connected. Everything is flipping connected. Um, I do have, have a question and this, um, I work part-time at Davis Bridal. So this was actually a question from one of the customers, right? Um, that she recently had, um, her son pass away uh, tragically, unfortunately. So, um, basically an accidental overdose and, and she, um, was wanting her son to come visit, but she was grieving so hard and all that. She didn't know she wanted to talk to him and all of that, but it, what he wasn't coming through or that she could remember that type of thing. So my question is, um, do you find do you find that people sometimes that the loved ones do come over, but it's just maybe we can't remember them visiting us in our dreams? You just teed up the perfect question for me for the show. You ready for this? And I, this is something I just come up with recently as you as you learn through life experiences. The best thing I can say is part of me being psychic and coming on shows is being a storyteller and talking with analogies. So you can learn this real quick and we don't have to get into a, a long. Here's my analogy. You know how we have to get outside of the city limits to go look at the stars at night because of light pollution? Well, think of our connection to our loved ones and our thoughts and our mind and all that noise pollution, thought pollution. If you're grieving somebody, you're likely not going to be able to receive their messages because you got a lot causing you to be upset, emotional, whatever. So what I tell people all the time, meditation and prayer, it's like the filtration system of spirituality. If you were to meditate and, and calm your mind and, and get yourself into a frame of reference where you can quiet the thoughts that negate or keep you from connecting to your loved ones, because really they send messages all the time. It's just that we have to be able to be open to receiving it and recognizing it. So like the example with the, the guy with the dream I said earlier, if you're not having a dream journal and writing down your dreams, if you're not clearing your mind and meditating and praying, whatever your higher power is, I'm, I'm a pretty eclectic person, meaning I was raised Catholic and I'm just spiritual now. So like I tell people, whatever it is you believe in, believe in it. If you say to our father, which I still do, but then I happen to intertwine chakras and auras and crystal healing and meditation and breath work. Hey, that's me. And that's how I, I do my spirituality. How do you do yours? So I would tell your, your friend, who's the mother, my heart goes out to her first off. I have a very soft spot in my heart for any mother grieving their child because I'm so tight with my mom that I would tell her that over time she will get better at it. She just has to clear out the, the, the noise pollution, the thought pollution, the thoughts in her mind that I can't do this or I, I, I'm not able to connect to him. And, and you know, especially with mother's son, my God, that, that bond is so sacred that I can guarantee she'll be able to connect with him through dreams through, you know, you could be sitting on the couch watching TV, thinking about your son. And all of a sudden, if he was like in the basketball, your remote might get stuck on on the NBA, you know, a game in the NBA, or it might be a song on the radio, or there could be a bird that comes to your balcony. It's a whole plethora of things that could happen. You just have to have an open mind and not look at it like, oh my God, I didn't get any messages. Actually, you probably did. You probably got a lot of thoughts and messages and corresponding things. But you're, if you're grieving so hard, you can't see it or feel it because you're numb, then it's going to go right over your head. So like, you got to slow it down, take deep breaths. I always take three deep breaths before I do a reading. It just grounds me. The breath is something that's very positive. It helps to kind of reorientate ourselves. And I think spiritually it works real well. That's why breath works so good. Meditation, prayer, journaling, um, 
clearing your mind, free associating, automatic writing, all those kind of things are good. Getting out in nature and going for a walk at night, reflective walking, perfect. I love it. And um, I highly recommend that if you're trying to get in touch with your loved ones, those are the kind of things you need to increase your mindfulness. You got to you got to increase your ability to be grounded. And if you're grieving somebody, meditate with rose quartz. You know, there's things you can do that can help calm you, help re- relax you. That's the kind of mindset you need to connect with your loved ones, not fight or flight. I'm grieving. I'm upset. I'm angry. I'm depressed. Those aren't going to help you as much. You got to calm all that to really bring it into alignments. And then I feel like you can do it, connect with the other side. That's awesome. Thank you so much. for uh, That's wonderful explanation. Thank you so much. That is awesome. So on, 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 on a side note, okay, now you're a lawyer and you're a psychic. Yeah. I'm going to ask, do you, okay. First of all, I so want you for my lawyer for every need, because don't you know the outcome of the case before we go to court? I'm going to give you the best answer to that one. If you look up the ethics rules for lawyering in any state I'm in, there's no provision that talks about psychic lawyers. So as an attorney looking at that, I've always kept my lawyer and psychic hats like left and right, separate altogether. Um, when I give readings and stuff, it's always after hours when I'm a lawyer. And I have actually now that my show's gained prominence. I've had a couple of clients that I represented contact me and say, well, since you're a psychic and you're a lawyer, can I ask you for some? I'm like, nope, don't keep them separate. I keep them separate. I don't I don't blend the two at all because if I was in court and people were looking at me like, oh, you know the outcome of this. No, I don't. I'm keeping it. I, there's things like that. I just don't use the, my abilities for. It's like going to the track and trying to bet on horses or going and playing the lotto. Like, I, I guess I could do that. But for whatever reason, I'm just never guided. I'm just guided to to it's all about karma and stuff, too. So like for me, I don't bet on the numbers. And stuff. My grandmother used to bet on horses and win all the time, but that was her way back when. We lived in New Jersey and she would just get itchy palms, go win a few thousand dollars, come back and act like it was normal. So I'm not saying people can't do that. I'm saying I don't. I'm not a gamble. Thank you. All right. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much. Kelly, uh, are you going to have a Kellyism for the day? I am. But before I do that, you have a review that we got, right? Oh, yes, we do. See, I got I was so concentrated on my my show. Here we go. So we did. Thank you for reminding me. All right. So we got a new review. It's actually a five star review. And shall I read it? Yes, please. All right. It says binging on Spirit Sherpa is a fabulous adventure. Diving into all things spiritual, Kelly's confidence and clarity set you straight on countless topics, all done with a great sense of humor. And that, it, can I say who it's from? Yeah, please. All right. That is from, let me see. It says Dating Coach Ronnie and Ryan. Oh, nice. Thanks, there Ronnie. There you go. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Also, before we go into the Kellyism, uh, Jason, where can people find you? And well, let's let's talk about where's your podcast. So you've got two podcasts, right? Yes. All right. Uh, so podcast is the Social Psychic Radio Show, which is my original show. You can find that on any platform, Instagram, um, the Social Psychic with I think it's underscore between each word. Uh, my website is www.thesocialpsychic.com. And so you can find me on most of those on any podcasting platform and those type of things. And then Psychic Visions, uh, so far we have an Instagram handle, which is Psychic Visions Podcast with the at sign before it. And then we're going to be launching. So as soon as we launch, our other information will be available at this moment. We're still in the intro stage of that, but it's coming out in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Fan freaking tastic. We're super excited. All right. So a Kellyism, what do we got? Um, all right. So what we're gonna say is uh, life, the best reality show ever. I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We just need more popcorn lately. That's all. We oh, need more popcorn. popcorn. Yeah, I want some real buttery stuff. All right. Oh, maybe they want to go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all that we have for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta and Jason Zook, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. 
Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong. Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving.